Hello YouTubers! Tommy here from Overland Transportation System with another update on building my shelf layout. So let's turn the camera around and we'll get right to it. Okay, so in this episode I finally got to the place where I can weather the track. So let me turn the camera around and we'll show the three steps involved. Okay, so here's just three sections of track and as you can see here in the very first one, it's just a little short section straight out of the box, uh, silver rail, and uh, the next one I've taken uh, camo uh, flat paint and some red oxide primer, and I've just spritzed it back and forth a little bit and cleaned off the rails, and that gives me a dark base. And then in the third section here is uh, the hand weathering with water-based paint. And uh, I've used a wet palette uh, to do this. And um, a wet palette is nothing more than uh, a Tupperware container with uh, some folded paper towel in the bottom, a piece of parchment paper covering it, uh, your acrylic paints, and keep the towel wet, keep it covered, and it stays moist for days, and you don't have dry paints. And you mix them together right on the parchment paper, and uh, that's called a wet palette. Alrighty, so let me turn this around, and uh, we'll get to the video. Okay, we're back to the layout, and uh, this is where I ended off. And so as you can see on this turnout, I've uh, taken green painter's tape and I've taped both sides of where the contacts go for when you throw the switch. So that way there I don't have to worry about cleaning any paint later and having poor contact after I paint. Uh, so we'll give that a little bit of a spritz. We'll come around this bend and uh, We'll call this one a wrap. All right, I'm going to try to do this while, while I'm holding the camera. So here we go. I guess give it a couple little quick uh, shots of that rust first. And uh, before it sets up, just come over it and just give it a quick wipe. Okay, and we'll come back with the camouflage for the real deal. And again, I'm going to hold the camera and try to do this all at the same time. Hope it goes well. Okay, and while that's still wet, just kind of run over the rails. Just a little bit, okay, and you have to pick these pieces of tape out of here, okay, here we are, had you off camera, okay, there's one little piece, get a little piece off of here, Get this off nice. There you go, come on. There we go. Okay, get that piece through the switch point. That one. There. And there, those point 
lights aren't aren't painted now. Okay, so that's done. Okay, so now let me just move my protective boards so I don't get paint where I don't want it on my background. And we'll start from this area here. And uh, I'll just give it a quick spritz. Okay. Put that on while it's still wet. I'll look quick with the bright boy. Some people use an eraser. I had this bright boy on hand. And so I decided to uh, use it. Okay, do this next piece. Got some red oxide. Camo. Okay. Back over it. Right boy. In there. And that piece is done. Now we'll just give this one a spritz. And we do a few inches at a time. A piece of one by three and a paper towel on. Just wipe off the rail heads, top the rails rather. And there you have it. Now what I'll do uh, after I get all of this done, I've got to do around this bend in the whole yard. Okay. And uh, once I get that all done, I'll come back with a brush and uh, a couple rust type colors. And I'll do uh, down in here on the, the nail heads, you know, that hold the rail. And uh, I'll change the color of some of the ties and just continue to uh, weather it up a little bit. And we'll uh, be back on camera at that point. So I'm going to wrap this up at this point for now, and I'll be back. Okay, so I've got this much of the track done so far. And uh, this is up on a little step stool. I'll come down off of there. We'll just follow it around to the end of the layout. And that's what we've got done so far. Uh, 10 o'clock? Mm -hmm. 11 o'clock? Okay. And here are the two colors that I use. Uh, I give it a little, little spritz of the rusty metal primer here or there. I give it a nice coat of the camouflage. And then while that's still damp, I give it another little spritz here and there with that reddish rusty metal primer again. And then I clean the top of the rails while it's still wet and follow it up immediately with a Bright Boy. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut the camera off. I'm going to get set up for my next piece of track uh, down in this area here and we'll show you the process. Alrighty, we'll be back. Okay, so in my palette, all I've put in there right now is just some white, some black, dark granite, um, classic caramel, a chestnut, and yellow. And so uh, 
We'll mix these around a little bit. I'll get a nice rust color that I like for the side of the rail and we'll give it a go. Okay, it, uh, it proved to be too hard to do both hold the camera and uh, paint at the same time. So basically what I've done here is uh, I've mixed uh, all of my colors but the black and the yellow and as you can see as I smeared them over towards the rust color I ended up with a color that I desired for the sided rail and uh, using a very small brush uh, I kept it wet almost made like a wash and I don't even know if you can even pick it up on the in the light here but uh, I just did a very light wash over top of the spray paint that I did yesterday which is primarily the camouflage little spritz here of the two reddish primers and once in a while come back into the camouflage with just a, a spritz but for the most part it's the dark dark brown camouflage which uh, makes a nice kind of an oily black but um, I wanted a little bit of rust color on the rail and it's really not showing up too much on the camera but to the eye it's there uh, I didn't want anything real pronounced to jump out at you just like I did with the clouds I just wanted a hint of what's there so we're just kind of toning the camouflage downs and uh, of course I will change colors a uh, little bit here and there as we go so it's not really uniform and I'll concentrate on uh, having a difference in both the ballast and the the color of the rail from the main to the lesser used sidings so I'm gonna shut the camera off I'm gonna get back to it and I'll come back and show you some results okay now with a little better lighting uh, you can see more of the weathering of the ties and the size of the rail of the track uh, giving it a little bit of rusty look wish it would sharpen up and focus better um, but yeah what I'm what I'll do uh, I'll continue to uh, weather the rails uh, basically what I did was I mixed those paints in the palettes and rather than get stuck in a certain color uh, I'd just uh, randomly brush quick between the rails on the on the ties and then jump over to another area and brush there and change up some color a little bit and brush so that you get a more even random appearance uh, now I do want to take and concentrate on changing the color of the main coming down through the center and those three tracks over there I'm gonna make them just a little more rusty just from sitting and just uh, cars being parked on them so there won't be any like diesel uh, spillage from locomotives or nothing because just rail cars will be there and so you'll have a lot more rust accumulate on those tracks and of course down here where the engines are parked uh, that's going to always stay a little more grimy black you know and uh, once I do my ballast then I'll come back into these rails with a, a rusty wash and I'll let that leach down from uh, the rail spikes down into the ballast a little bit and then uh, hopefully we'll call that a wrap so I'm just gonna cut this loose for now and uh, I'll continue my project on around the layout and once I get this area all done then I'll have to take all my rail cars and uh, move them back to the yard and uh, this area here will go a lot quicker because you only got, you know, pretty much single tracks here and there. It's not like that whole yard area. So, okay, we will uh, turn this off for now 
and further update I'll be back okay so I finally reached the end of the line here and as you can see my wet palette I just kept mixing back and forth the burnt umber the raw sienna black a little bit of white uh, getting the different tones of of rust and uh, old wood and uh, oil soaked wood and so uh, after doing like a dry brush technique uh, along the rails and uh, then down the center uh, with some mixture of colors and every once in a while uh, picking out a specific color to do a certain tie uh, we got just a blend of old rustic colors on the rail and now I'm just taking uh, a piece of one by three and as you can see here I just kind of rub this over top of them rails and uh, clean that paint off and then I'll come back over top of this uh, possibly with a bright boy or something may not even have to this is uh, shaping up pretty clean after I run a train on this I'll see if we have any stalls going on if uh, the locomotives don't stall then uh, I'll figure that uh, these rail heads are uh, nice and clean and you do want to be a little careful when you come into your turnouts uh, rub in one direction going with the turnout point so you don't catch it and bend it and uh, like I switch to this side and I put the the pressure on this side push it over the other side and kind of clean that side so you don't have any mistakes um, and that uh, that there right now will wrap up uh, the track and just looking it over here and let's uh, let's fire up a locomotive and just run it over see how it runs uh, this part is all done so uh, let me come on down to the end of the layout I had to show as I showed you in the beginning I had to move all the cars out of the yard started here uh, that turned out to be quite a tedious uh, project it took uh, four days just to do the yard I could only do so much and I got tired of it and had to let it go for a bit so uh, let's fire up my system okay bring her up lights on okay everything's active take my second power head here and we'll take it down over here where I have this little CSX switcher and uh, I'll put the controller in its holster come on down here plug it in we have 1125 we have 1125 fired up so let's make sure our turnout is aligned for straight okay um, got our headlight on let's give it a little speed this is the only locomotive I have with sound currently so let's uh let's just move this down a little bit Then we'll back it up. Maybe I'll switch around to the other end and uh, run the locomotive into that area that I just did and cleaned. Uh, I'm getting kind of anxious now because my next step uh, will be ballasting my track. <clears throat> I'm probably going to use a mixture of both HO and N scale on it uh, for a nice gravel mix and a little bit of real dirt. Okay, let me put this in reverse now. And uh, let's go back. catch it coming on down the S curve here with the super elevation 
You can see the car is leaning nice as they come down. Not a lot of super elevation, but just a little bit, you know, to uh, break up just a, a monotonous S curve. Coming down through there nice. Our intended route is straight back on the leg, right on what would be considered like the main. No stalls, that's good. Okay, I'm going to go forward and run it down the other legs. down the middle one there. Okay. Go forward. And run it down the front leg. There we have it. Okay, that's kind of neat. I pushed nine. Push nine on here. And it goes through a shutdown sequence. And there you go. Alrighty, so that does wrap up this video. And so I will end it with a thank you for watching. And we will be back when I start to ballast the track. Bye bye.